How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be finishing up the week here. For the next two hours, talking pro wrestling, it's probably one of the busiest, busiest news days uh, that we've had, mainly because of one story, and that is that as of, I mean, this has been building, as of a week from Monday, the 26th, uh, there will be no more wrestling on uh, the Superstation, on uh, TBS, well, TBS or TNT. The Fusion deal is basically dead. It's not... I mean, you could say it's a lie, but it would be a different deal. The deal to buy the company is dead because Jamie Kellner would not, um, would basically would not promise in the contract a guarantee uh, that wrestling would continue um, in two primetime time slots per week. Um, I think that there had been a decision made, um, not a final decision, but there had certainly been talk about Thunder being canceled. We'd written about this a long time ago. Um, and that could have been a deal breaker, but that was all made before Jamie Kellner was involved or took over, which was just about a week ago, as the head of all programming for all of the Turner Time Warner networks, which includes WB, TNT, TBS. And he would not make a commitment to, uh, for long term for any, uh, wrestling. There was at some point, um, talk, just a couple of days ago actually, that the WB Network would pick up one primetime show and that TBS and TNT would cancel. I don't know what Fusion's thoughts on that one were, but ultimately that was not, you know, guaranteed in the contract either. And there was really nothing, without the guarantees of television time, there was nothing for Fusion to buy, realistically. Um, other than the name WCW, whatever that's worth, it's not worth that much. They are actually still in negotiations. Um, to buy the name WCW, as is WWF in negotiations, to buy the name WCW um, for the idea that if they owned the name, they could, you know, do some marketing and, you know, both sides could use it as a springboard for, you know, whatever they have, but the actual organization itself, contracts and all that, um, unless they are sold to a third party, and there may be people coming out of the woodwork for this one, although I don't know, I don't know about that, um, there is a possibility the company, but, but what would you be buying? So I, you know, it's, it's what, what investment would it be? You'd be buying the contracts of wrestlers with no guarantee of television time. Uh, Bischoff is still, you know, uh, and Fusion are still looking to be in the wrestling business, but it would not be, they would have to basically start their own company uh, from scratch and maybe use the WCW name if, they, if it was being sold for a small enough price, but that's not necessarily the case either. Um, it was very, very close. Uh, God, as late as Wednesday to a final deal. And that was basically the deal breaker. And you, they couldn't buy it under those circumstances. And it was a new guy involved in negotiations who was not in the original negotiations. And that's the story of wrestling. So basically, if Siegel had still been involved and they would have uh, bought the company with the time slots and had it in the contract... You're guaranteeing them for a number of years. Contract couldn't have been, you know, canceled out or whatever by, uh, by like a switchover. What do you mean? I assume. What are you talking about? I don't, I don't know what you're saying. That's, okay, if Siegel were replaced, his replacement, whoever that could be, if they'd already signed the contract, couldn't have done anything, right? If the contract had been, it's not, it's not so much Siegel, but um, if the contract had been signed two weeks ago, because Kellner, let's see, Kellner took over. Was it like Tuesday of last week? Yeah, something like that. It was, it was, Kellner took over basically the, the day, Tuesday, it, it was the day before I was in Los Angeles. I was in Los Angeles the day that, that happened. It was the day we took the show off. So it was, a week, it was like a week ago. Uh, before, if the contract had been signed before that and the contract had guaranteed them, you know, primetime shows for, say, the next several years on those stations, yeah, the deal probably would have gone through. So basically, well, well, if the contract had been signed before, it would have, no, it would have been a done deal and, and yeah, it's all timing. You got a guy who, you know, for whatever reason, whether it be the prestige of the network, whether it be the declining ratings of wrestling, not any product knowledge of wrestling, you don't know anything that goes ups and downs, or or just plain not caring because they don't want wrestling on their station. It's not that huge of a ratings thing. And you got to remember, you know, Ted Turner does Ted Turner hasn't doesn't have big power anymore. That was the guy who always saved wrestling. Wrestling was to say it would never have been gone. As with Turner on the thing, you can never say never, but it probably never would have been because it was in worse shape many times. Not, It wasn't in worse shape as far as financial losses, but in worse shape as far as ratings, attendance, and things like that. And, and um, at other times, and Turner always saved it. But this time, I mean, 
you know, Turner couldn't save it. I mean, that was the one thing um, months and months ago when the word was out that they were putting it for sale. You know, a lot of people thought, you know, when push comes to shove, Turner is not is testing the waters. He's really never going to sell it. It built his station. You know, it's the flagship of the station, that and the Atlanta Braves. And the bottom line was Turner did not have the power at that point anymore to stop the sale because you know, he was no longer the man in charge. Yeah. I mean, as far as, like, if they don't have the TV slots, I don't see the point of continuing negotiations at all. I mean, well, that's, get, that's, that's why they're that's why they're not. Well, I mean, for any company to even want the name WCW right now, I don't even see the point of it. I mean, it's been, you know, it's just been so badly damaged that I really don't see the point. I don't see any upside to having the name WCW and starting over from scratch, especially with no TV. Well, press, you should, but if you can get TV somewhere else, I think that that's the idea. Is that um, for for W for 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 uh, Fusion, it would still be a name brand. You know, it's kind of like you. Um, I don't know. You know, if you buy a, a defunct name of a of a title of a magazine, okay. You know what I mean? It's like it sort of has like uh, let's say Sport Magazine was a very popular magazine. Of course, it lost so much popularity, but it's probably not a good analogy. But in a magazine that like say folded and you bring back the magazine under the same name even though it's new ownership even after it's folded there is sort of a thing like oh you know like uh sport magazines coming back you know what i mean but well, what if the magazine had the stigma of being horrible oh yeah no you're right you're right about that but the one thing is is that wcw does have a name brand internationally you know what i'm saying yeah where the stigma isn't that strong that it's horrible and you can sell you know one of the things, one of the things where, where theoretically, um, if a Fox, because that's really about the, it's really, to me, it's do or die as far as another company. Because, no, you can't, you can't compete unless you've got national TV. Yeah. And Fox is the one because it's got worldwide, uh, you know, it's got worldwide stations, basically, you know, between, you know, the sky and all that. And the one thing with the, um, with Murdoch and everything like that, um, and, the, and, and the News Corp and everything like that, you know, it's, it's, it's a big enough company, and wrestling done well. The one thing wrestling has done well that even many of the major sports in North America don't have is it has the opportunity to be very, very popular almost anywhere. It translates very well into every culture. You know, like WWF is on in, you know, whatever number of countries it is, it's very popular all over the world, and wrestling has always been. And American wrestling has one advantage over Japanese wrestling in that, for whatever reason, um, a Japanese wrestling product really doesn't play well, um, you know, except in Oriental countries, because yeah. of the, you know, whereas an American product, just because of the American faces and stuff, does play well all over the world. I think people look, you know, just like just like a, a, a hit television show in the United States, uh, you know, whatever a hit television show, like Baywatch or whatever, because that was like a big inter, you know, international hit or Dallas way back when. I mean, that thing was huge all over the world, whereas... Whatever the number one television show is in Japan right now, and I have no idea what it is, outside of Japan, nobody knows what it is. Yeah. It, it, they just don't trans, uh, or Japanese movies don't come, don't come here, but our, but our American movies go everywhere. And it's the same thing. Um, and that's, that is the one uh, thing that uh, they, that, uh, of course, it's got to be a good product. It's got to have marketable guys. You know, some, some Mickey Mouse product, you know, in all these countries, it's not going to get any attention because they got the WWF. Um, I mean, you got to have a competitive product that's way easier said than done. Yeah. But, but, uh... I'm kind of going back and forth on whether I, um, would prefer WWF to buy, like, uh, the name and, uh, just some of the top guys to do the, uh, interpromotional angle and then absorb them. Because, I mean, the bad thing would be, obviously, you'd have the monopoly, and, um... But, I mean, the, the other way gonna, I'm looking gonna, at you're, it... You're going to have it either way. Yeah, you can have it either way, but the other way I'm looking at it is, if you're going to have a monopoly either way, you know, you might as well have WWF buy it, do the interpromotional angle for the month or whatever that Vince can handle it before he absorbs everybody, make some money, and then everybody that was not purchased, you know, there's still going to be free agents, and if someone else wants to start up, there's a bunch of guys there to get. The only problem is, you wouldn't have the top guys like Goldberg available because they'd all be under WWF contract. I think... I mean, for the long term of wrestling, it would be better if the Goldbergs, you know, we're still free. Are, are, are free agents, so somebody could use them as building blocks for a new company. Especially Goldberg, more than anyone. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Hogan name is a big one in this. Is a big pawn in this one. 
Um, and the other big name is the Goldberg name because, again, that's a name that the big television executives know. Um, and it means something because he got all that media publicity. And if you go, well, we got Hulk Hogan and Bill Goldberg, it'll mean a whole lot more than saying we've got anybody else. I mean, whether you say Kevin Nash or Scott Steiner, those names mean nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, how would the legalities work as far as after the 26th? I assume that the company would just keep the guys in a contract and not run any TV or any events or anything, right? For right now, while they're in the process of selling, yeah, because if they think that they can sell it to, to someone else who comes out of the woodwork, without, but the, no one's going to, you know, here's the thing. Without the guarantee of television, all these names mean nothing. Yeah. It, you know, you can only sell it to directly to a television station who, because any middleman, unless he's got guaranteed television, you know, having all those names, it, there's just nothing, you're not buying anything other than a bunch of expensive contracts. Yeah. Because I mean, if you got to go and pay for your TV time, too, there there is no way. And there's I don't really want to compare, like, the WCW guys to the ECW guys or anything like that. But if you look at, like, um, if a company were thinking, well, we'll buy all this talent and just tour. If you look at, like, the, uh, the shows that these uh, former ECW guys are working right now, they don't draw. I mean, you're not going to... No. You're not going to buy all these names and think you'll just do touring and, and make some money off it. It's not going to work. Not without television. No. There's no way. And even with television, there's no guarantee. I mean, the only guy, you know, for the last couple of years, the only guy who's made any money touring is Vince. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the cost of touring has gone way, way up. I mean, I don't know what the break-even is for a WWF show. Um, and I don't know what the break-even would be for a WCW show. But, I, I mean, I'm thinking it's probably, you know, a couple hundred grand now. A mm -hmm. night. You know, it's not like it's, you know, $20,000. I mean, between the planes and just everything, you know, the fact that you've got to do, you know, this, the state of the art with the pyro and everything, you can't do, you know, hold a little light bulb above the ring like you could do in the old days and do a cheap wrestling show because, you know, you could do it, but no one will ever come back. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing, the whole problem right now, I think, with uh, any other company trying to start up is that the WWF has set the standard so high that... So expensive. Yeah, I mean, you have to, even if you can't compete, you have to... You have to at least come close, or at least, you know, you have to make it look like you are competing. And right now, yeah. how can yeah. you do that without so much money? You can't do it without so much money because WWF spends so much money. I mean, look at all the uh, problem. I mean, you never talked about XFL. Well, it's minor league football. It's just like anything else would be minor league wrestling. Yeah. It'd Unless be like, they had it would a, be like some billionaire behind it. Well, I mean, the XFL is basically the EC, you know, ECW without the cult. Well, I would say I don't want to say without the cult following because the XFL does draw well at their at, in some in some markets they draw very well. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a basic ECW. It's a whole bunch of new ideas, some of which are good, some of which are bad. But ultimately, you know, the average sports fan, you know, or television fan or whatever it is, just doesn't have any interest in the product. Yeah. Because it's not it's not the big one. Just like the average casual wrestling fan, you know, I mean. Like I go, like, like my friends who are wrestling fans, they're aware, they were aware of ECW, but they never had any interest in it. When it was on on Friday night on TNN, I mean, if, if they were sitting there at my house watching it, they would enjoy it. It's not like they didn't like it, mm -hmm. but they would never watch it on their own, and they didn't really care about it. Whereas, you know, Monday Night Raw, you know, if it's not football season, they'll watch it. If it's football season, if it's a bad game, they'll watch it. Or you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just one of those things that you you consider doing. Mm -hmm. And that's you know that's how you get your TV ratings is from from those people, not people like us. I mean. You know, if it was people like us, there would be, you know, many, many different wrestling companies going around, and they would all be thriving like Japan had. Uh, you know, when, when Japan really had the business hot, let's say, four or five years ago, and, and you know, there were just dozens, you know, now now they've got all those companies, but they're not thriving. But there was a period where, you know, I'm thinking like 94, 95, 96, where you had, I mean, it was so great in Japan where you had all the different styles. You had the Lucha you know, with Michinoku Pro doing, you know, being well. You had the hardcore with the FMW. You had All Japan with its style. You had New Japan with its style. You had the rings and the UWFI. You know what I mean? It was, yep. it was basically something for everyone and and something that casual fans knew about and the hardcore fans. I mean, they, they had, you know, they had nothing to complain about because any, any, anyone who, you know, didn't like one style... If you style, were one thing, you could find something else. That's right. I always say that about the, about the situation now, but now, I mean... You know, if you're really a strong fan and you complain, you know, you still can find tapes because there is every style out there. But it ain't going to be in this country. Yeah, it's not going to be. Um, I mean, it's now it's tapes. I mean, it's like there's there's one alternative. And I mean, and it's this, you know, I mean, I I enjoyed SmackDown last night. I mean, it wasn't as, as good as Raw, but I, I, I really enjoyed the WF product. There's things that really entertain me. I mean, Regal last night, when he did that line about... Um, 
um, you know, I need an interpreter. You know what I mean? When they were when oh, yeah, doing yeah. the two accents. I mean, that was that was really really funny. Um, it was just unintentional. Top of the card is just awesome. What? They're top of the card. I mean, it wasn't even like uh, another an, another excellent main event. Yeah. Austin Angle. You know what? Austin was. I mean, you know, we all know how good Angle is. I was watching Austin. You know, real close in that match. He is really good. Mm-hmm. For, you know, the two guys. I gotta say this. You know. I don't know what it is about Austin and Rock and why people knock their ability. And they're not, they're not the two best workers in the business. They're the two most over guys in the business. But, you know, this is, they're not Hulk Hogan and they're not, you know, like Roddy Piper and WCW or Sting or something. I mean, these guys have great matches all the time. And it's not the other guy always carrying them. And I know Rock's offense is basically just punch, 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 punch. But he's got great timing. It doesn't um, matter, though. That's, that's you know, it's what he needs it's to like do. Yeah, he has great matches. Yeah, he doesn't put his body at risk, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I, 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 you know, Rock's not the greatest worker in the world, but he's a damn good worker. And Austin, let, you know, I mean, for all the injuries the guy has, he's 36 years old, he's got millions of dollars, although not as many millions as before because of the divorce, but he's got millions of dollars in the bank. He's over whether he works hard or not. I mean, I give him credit for that match last night. You know, I mean, one thing about Austin, way too, is, I mean, you, you see a lot of wrestlers that have never been injured, that are still hesitant in the ring. And uh, this guy broke his neck, and he's not afraid of anything. Yeah, he those overhead duplexes from Angle. Mm-hmm. I cringe every time. And I'm sitting at home on a couch, millions of miles away or whatever, and this guy's in the ring taking these things with, you know, he just had neck surgery. I know. He's incredible. And, 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 and the thing is, is with the guy, you got to remember, this is a guy, he's Steve Austin, and he could just say, no, Kurt, you know, i got a bad neck. Yeah. You know, you can, we can do this and this. You can punch and kick me, you know? So, mm-hmm. I mean, you, you, i I got to give, I mean, for work rate and for desire and for the ability to put on a good show. You know, I mean, here's a guy, remember when he came back? You know, he could have come back and been Hogan, and, and, and he still was going to main event with Rock, and they were still going to do however many hundred thousand buys, seven, eight hundred thousand buys, nine hundred thousand buys they're going to do at WrestleMania. You know, whether he worked super hard or not, because the name was so strong and the match was so strong, but he came back, and um, I mean, like you know, you go pay, you go pay to see Austin. You know, you get your money's worth. Yeah. So, Lawler, Jerry Lawler will be on Power Pro Wrestling tomorrow, which is very intriguing because um, I mean, I, I gotta, I gotta find out a little bit more about that one. Um, you know, WWF did not really want him on that show uh, a week ago. They may have changed. It wasn't like a, like a major thing. Like they went and told you know Randy Hales, you know, I mean, or maybe I don't know, maybe they did. But I was under the impression that they didn't really want Lawler on those TVs. And he's going to be on, so, you know, whatever it is. Maybe he'll shoot an angle. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows what's going on in the history of wrestling? There is, uh, this is, they've been a pivotal, pivotal, it's not even a word. It's been a very pivotal short period. Uh, let me see. You know, I can't the, even, we're talking about this, and I think that we should have been preparing for a long time, and probably we sort of have, but I, been talking about? I don't even know, I mean, I, I kind of get it, but, for some reason, I just see on, like, uh, April, um, whatever it's going to be, April 2nd. April there's 2nd, there's one wrestling no show on Monday night. And there's, there's no thunder there's no on Nitro. Wednesday. And I'm it's just like... And there's no pay-per-view. There's no yeah, there's nothing. not going to be a pay-per-view. Um, I'm going to have more time to watch indie tapes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, I'm going to have and more time to watch Japanese tapes. Tape. What? Uh-huh. Survival, yeah, I know. Um, but I'll tell you what, for the overall popularity of wrestling, I mean, this is a total disaster. Oh, yeah. Even though WCW was, was a really bad organization the last couple of years, and economically they deserve to die. I mean, that's the reality, and, and it shouldn't come as a surprise if you don't lose that kind of money. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess that's it. You know, I mean, April the 2nd, there's no more Nitro. And, you know, I can't say 100% it's not coming back, but it looks 95 98%. That it's not coming back. Um, Brad Siegel's going to have a meeting. I think it is on uh, the 27th with the staff. But, I mean, you know, he's not going to... I don't know what he's going to say, you know, explaining what this really all means. I mean, the spec... You know, we've talked about basically all the speculation and all the stuff that's out there. It's probably about as much as as anything is out there. You know, it's basically all the news that is out there. Um, if you guys want to call up, you can call us at one eight seven seven three nine two uh 3299 and we'll be talking about this. We're going to play the uh, Vince McMahon... Bob Costas, the, uh, the stuff on the XFL, when we come back from the break, real quick, I want to give the poll results uh, from last night. What did you think of Vince McMahon on Off the Record? Very good, 11%. 
good 13%, bad 10%, very bad 19%. Didn't see the show 47%, so it was somewhat of a mixed reaction, um, which I don't know. I guess I am surprised. I am surprised um, for many reasons. This is today's question, actually for the entire weekend. What best describes your thoughts of where wrestling will be in one year? That's what we've been talking about for a while. We got, it's, 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 it's a... It's a similar question, rephrased a little bit, but the reality and the bottom line is is that um, you know we know a lot more today than we knew two days ago or a week ago the last time the question was asked. A, WWF will be the only game in town. B, someone will buy WCW and make a go of it. C, someone will open up a new major company and make a go of it. D, UFC or a mixed martial arts group will become a real player. And E, many will try, but ultimately they will fail. I'll tell you, this is uh, going to be uh, quite a year. You know, between all the economic problems of the country... Uh, which is another issue, because it's going to be really hard Good to... Out, Vince. Oh, Whoa. sorry. That was Bob Costas. He was, like, interrupting. Um, but, no, between he all the... Um, what? He always does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that that show was, like, uh, on the sports talk stations here yesterday in San Francisco um, for, like, five hours. That was, like, the, the lead topic of uh, conversation. Huh. Uh, the Costas interview with Vince. I'm not um, really that surprised, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, for a lot of reasons. I mean, I, I tell you, before we go on with the, the thing, you know, it was one thing, and it was bad, and it was real bad, when Jim Ross on Monday did that XFL speech. Oh, no. But you don't know. Taz! When Taz and Michael Cole did I mean, at least Jim Ross has the credibility of being an XFL announcer, of someone who, you know, whether other people know it or not, is a very knowledgeable football person, and there is a measure of truth to the fact that, you know, I, I don't want to say they're undercovered, because that's, that's, but, but, but there, are, there, are, there were reporters, there's no question that there were reporters that went out of their way to insult and revel in their destruction, okay, of, the, of those ratings. Uh, but, uh, you know, part of it also was, you know, they brought it on themselves by coming out there and promising to be something more exciting than the NFL. I mean, that was just a really bad strategic move. And that was what they portrayed themselves as, and that's what they got their first audience as, and that was the standard that they that they told everyone they were going to be, and that's what they were judged on, and they failed. Okay, so there is, and and that's what everybody was, you know, all those stories about how like, in the comparison, it's like you're comparing them to the NFL. So so they brought a lot of it on themselves, but there were maybe there were some people who piled on, maybe not. And I know that there's a little game going on. I saw um, Rome got caught. Jim Rome yesterday, I uh, did a big speech because J K J K McKay was the the uh, GM of the LA team, he uh, he basically like insulted Jim Rome, and then Jim Rome came back and insulted him, and I'm going like, oh, Jim Rome, you're going to turn into Phil Mushnick, which is like, you know, you just you 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 know, you're responding to the insult rather than just sit back and go, the rating for next week is going to be, and this is how much money they're losing, which he actually did say, but as soon as they can drag you into personally, because they're the WF is is trying a game right now. It's the ECW game. You know, I've been through with the TNN thing and everything. And, 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 and look what good that did, by the way, I'd like to add. No, but it rallies. The, it, it, it's a, it was a great way of saving face, though. No, it did no good. And this will do no Obviously, it will do no good as well. But uh, I mean, the whole thing was, you got Michael Cole. Yeah, Taz, no Taz, Taz and Michael Cole, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. I just got, Michael Cole has no credibility. Taz, you know, how can he build credibility as an announcer in two weeks or whatever? And that's bad enough as it is. But you don't start a, um, a tirade about this like Michael Cole did by starting off by going, I don't even know the exact line, but it was something like, XFL got off to a rocky start, but the last few weeks have been tremendous. And it was like, okay, you just killed yourself right there. You know the other thing, too, and then we're going to go right to the thing. The best XFL game was, wasn't the second week. No, it wasn't last week or the week before. The second week of the XFL was that double overtime, that was a really, really... You could not have had a more exciting football game in the second week. And the rating for the third week went way down after the second week. It was, it, it's a rejection of the product. And if they think that because these players are gelling, you know, if they're going to fool... I, I, I know it's just a party line. You know, like, oh, the, the play's better and the players are gel. You know, it's an entertainment thing. It failed. I mean, I, I, it'd be great. I hope it, I hope it makes it. I really do. But, you know, that... You know, it's, 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 you know, if they have a double overtime game next week and it's really, really exciting, that's not going to turn the thing around. There's a perception that, the, and, and, you know, by crying, by coming off as crybabies on wrestling, which is, believe me, what they did last night, um, that's not, that's not going to serve their purpose. The only thing it's going to do is it gives them an excuse when they fail. And to me, it's, 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 
by doing that, it's almost like the, it's, it's what Paul Heyman did. You know, it's like, I know I'm getting kicked off this station, so I'm going to turn, the, you know, because my ratings are not high enough. So I'm going to turn the station into a heel, and that way when I get kicked off, everyone goes, that heel station, we've been, they've, been, they've been after him for six months. And, 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 and again, not that Paul Heyman doesn't have a very legitimate gripe with TNN, because he does, but that thing, you know, the way that they played that angle, you know, I mean, it was, it was clearly a very calculated thing to save face from day one. I mean, as soon as he did it, I, you know, we were talking about it on the show. As soon as he started that angle, it was a calculated thing to save face because he knew he was going to lose the network. And, and among and hardcore yeah. ECW fans, it worked. Yeah, and that's what I think that's what Vince is trying to do is among, you know, it's really going to be hard to save face if this thing fails, but among, you know, with WWF fans, the hardcore Vince, Vince's God fans, but among those fans, if he can create an enemy in, in the media, the media killed this league, you know, and the enemy media, you know, and Phil Mushnick killed this league, that's his way of saving face when, he, when the thing inevitably goes away. Mm-hmm. So it's a game. Anyway, let's go to the Bob Costas XFL with Vince McMahon. Here now, Vince McMahon. Thanks for coming, Vince. Pleasure. XFL ratings are down 75% from week one. They now rival the lowest ratings ever in prime time, not just for a sports program, but for any television show. Right. Can you guarantee me right now that there will be a year two for the XFL? Can I guarantee you that? I can't guarantee you that I'm going to be breathing in and breathing out after we leave the studio. But you're pretty sure about that one. Uh, Yeah, and I'm pretty sure about the continuation of the XFL in one form or another. Does that mean on network television and on NBC and you too? I would like to say so, yes. Um, NBC has been very supportive. Uh, I think that the difference here, Bob, is that people have to understand that when you start a league like this, I mean, this is not the easiest thing to do. I mean, let's face it. So when you start a league like this, even though we have many advantages, um, it, it's not easy. You, you make mistakes along the way. You correct your mistakes. You focus. Uh, and you go forward in terms of brand building. And this is brand building. This is not just television programming. And that's that's the thing I think that a lot of people... Uh, quite frankly, miss. I mean, it's all about, you know, the you know, 13 weeks and out or less in terms of television programming these days, especially with the attention span of a lot of the programmers on the network. So, I mean, again, I think that once the affiliates understand uh, that this is brand building, uh, I think we're in it for the long run with NBC is, is certainly my hope, and they've given me every indication that that is the case. Yeah, it's one thing to try to build a brand on cable or elsewhere, but even on Saturday night, which has not been the best night for the networks in recent years, that airtime is meaningful, it's important, and it can't be sacrificed week after week if some improvement isn't shown. That's just common sense, right? Significant improvement. Well, you know, certainly I don't think anything could be sacrificed. At the same time, again, I think there has to be a longer range approach that this is not just programming we're in it for the long run i'm very long range oriented in everything that we do business wise so i mean i think that once the affiliates catch on to that you know and stay with it i think we have to make a marked improvement in our television rating quite frankly i'm disappointed in them no doubt about that you know i think that you know, we started out with this huge television rating and and dropped off. You know, it, curiosity it, factor, promos right, yeah, leading I think up. Curiosity factor, but I think we made some mistakes as well. I mean, what know, were the, the cap- biggest mistakes, and what can you correct, or is it too late in some cases because people have gone away? I don't think it's too late. Um, I think that you know the caliber of the play initially was not as good as it should be. The caliber of play now is fantastic. It's great. It's, to, it's, this well, it's the weekend. same players, by and large. How, in the space of a month, can the caliber of play improve well, that it's much? It's real easy because, you know, it, we didn't have the luxury of starting, you know, a, f- a four-week preseason like the NFL normally does. Again, this is a startup league, Bob. you got to give us a little bit of a break here, and the media does as well, because we knew we were going to make mistakes, and we have made them. So had we started up in a longer preseason, then the teams would have been far more, more cohesive, you know, they would have looked uh, much more like NFL football, though we said all along this is not NFL football. So I think the caliber of the play now is extraordinary. It's exciting. You've got wide open offenses now, and, you know, and, and a lot of points are going up on the board. You've got, you know, innovations, which we have made, and quite frankly, some of the network execs, you know, uh, you know that cover the NFL are already talking about stealing them. You, know, you mean audio and having the cameraman on the field and sure. a different point of view, that sort of thing. Different production sure. techniques. Right. I think they'd actually steal the scramble if they could. You know, I mean, that's kind of Instead of the coin could. toss. Right. You know, we call it the human coin toss. You know, so it, the idea here is to start up a league in which uh, players have opportunity, otherwise would not have an opportunity. 
Uh, it's a very family friendly in terms of ticket prices. You know, we've been averaging some 27,000 people coming to our live events, which I would suggest would rival, if not supersede, what the old AFL did when they first started, and even the NFL. Let, let, let's look at this realistically. The NFL has been at this for 75 years. You know, it's not fair, you know, to jump all over us and, okay, when are you guys going to die? Is it over yet? You know, can, can it please be over yet? You know, uh, you know, 75 years of building a brand, you know, and the NFL is where they are now, more power to them. I think they do some things wrong that we do right. And I think that it's going to take a little time to build our brand. And you can't do it in one year's time. It's unrealistic for anyone who wants to partner with us to think that you can build a brand in one year. What about this analysis, which seems pretty much on the money to me? It's not WWF enough for that crowd, right. and it's got not good enough football for the sports-minded crowd. It's neither fish nor fowl. People took a look, and they split. I don't think, you know, again, I think that uh, that's not necessarily unfair, what you just said. I think our research indicates that that the World Wrestling Federation fan likes his diet of WWF entertainment in its proper form. I think that in terms of a football uh, fan standpoint, they like football. I don't think that they mind any of the rule changes that we've made, you know, any of our brand of football and bringing the game closer to the fan. The in-stadium experience is off the chart when you come to an XFL game. It's off the chart. You're really almost on the field. You, you feel so close to the play. So these innovations are, are fantastic. I think that, that, again, the caliber of the play, more than anything else, we weren't quite ready to play the kind of ball that we are currently playing. And it's my hope that, you know, that the media, you know, which has been, I think, somewhat unfair, you know, in jumping all over us and asking for this damn thing to please go away, you know, I think it's, it's unfair when you consider... The caliber of play that we have now, all I'm asking is just take another look at it now and, and judge it in, on its merit or lack of merit as it relates to football. You came to this with plenty of power, with expertise from a certain area of television and entertainment. Mm -hmm. You came to it with celebrity, but in most people's minds, not with prestige because of the type of programming you're associated with. On the other hand, NBC has prestige. Right. They risk not just dollars. They risked prestige. Do you think, is your sense, as you deal with the people at NBC, that they're feeling the heat on that front? Oh, I think they're feeling the heat. I mean, again, I think that the media made certain that they're feeling the heat. You know, I mean, they're, they're asking uh, Ebersol, you know, please, get the hell out of this thing, you know. Uh, and Dick uh, is, is very a stand-up guy and a friend of mine, as you know, for many, many years. Uh, Bob Wright as well. Uh, I think that, that they're in this thing with us, but at the same time, I don't know how much heat they can take, and I don't know what prestige means anymore, because again, when you think about brand building, I don't think the XFL has hurt NBC in terms of prestige. How? Because they've been associated with me individually, or, you know, the, the, the smear, if you would, of, of World Wrestling Federation Entertainment? I mean, is that it? I think there's a general perception that while the XFL doesn't go anywhere near where the WWF goes, that it's a low-rent form of Have you television. Seen any of the games tell me what is low rent. Not so much thing. within the games. The pregame show, especially week one, we don't have was, was one of the shows. most mindless things I've ever seen. We don't have a pregame show. Week one, there was a pregame show. We don't have any pregame shows, which is one of any more. Problem. No, we've never had a pregame. What was the pregame show that aired in Los Angeles, in New York, and in other markets? A half hour prior to the first that was game. A local thing that the NBC O and O's put together, of which we had nothing to do with. But it left but the impression. It left the impression in many quarters that this was a low rent deal, and I'm sure that NBC is hearing, it, is hearing it from affiliates, from station managers, and from some portion of the audience saying not just that we don't like this, so we prefer to watch something else, but that we're offended by this association. Well, you know, if that's the case, you know, then, then they have to do what they have to do, and just like you do, Bob, you know? I mean, quite frankly, from my standpoint, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm what makes this company, I'm what makes my company and this country go round and round. I take risk, calculated risk. Uh, and quite frankly, if you go back to when we first made this announcement of the XFL, we didn't have any partners. We were going to do it all on our own. Okay. So I think it is a viable business. 
I think that uh, that when you come to a live event and you see all these young people in the stands having a wonderful time, uh, I think that our television ratings are going to build back. I think that we may throw a, a few uh, things in there to get them back in terms of, of, of promotions and things of that nature. But and we're going to have to do that. We're going to have to spend some money, you know, that we otherwise may not have to spend. We're going to have to convince the media, quite frankly, to cover this for the event that it is, not the perception that you, as an elitist, in my point of view, or others would have about it ain't low rent football. I'm sorry, it's kids out there playing their hearts out. If no you one, watched it, no yeah. one, no one dismisses the players and coaches who are trying to make a living. Uh, in a football league. No one dismisses that and there are probably very good stories within that. There is an association though that in the minds of some is a plus. That's what brought a lot of that 10 rating the first week. People saying, well, I'll take a look at what Vince McMahon has cooked up and I saw the promos. There are others who are put off by that. You bring both positives and negatives. Who's put off? And in what way? What have we done what have we done in anything with the XFL? What, we have cheerleaders? We said right out front we were going to have cheerleaders, nice-looking ladies that you were going to get to know, unlike the NFL, sort of has them but doesn't have them kind of a thing. If nothing else, we are brutally honest about who we are and what we are presenting. But there isn't one thing in that game that I know of that we've presented that's salacious in any way. If the ratings don't turn around, will you be tempted to make it more salacious? No, we just did that. You know, we just did, we just did, as a matter of fact, you showed the clip at the top, you know, of some sort of thing whereby we were going to go into the Orlando Rage cheerleaders locker room. Okay? Right. It was a spoof. All right. And the was, guy hit his head, couldn't get inside, and, and right. you tried to revive him as he lay there in the corner. Right. And we said it was a blatant attempt to increase television ratings. As the promos all week long. That's what we said. And it was, you know. But we were winking at our audience. They understand what we're doing. And I believe it's the quality of the football that's going to bring viewers back. If you could be guaranteed that it would increase ratings, would you fix the games? What, I fi what a ridiculous statement. What it's not a statement. It's a question. It's a question. I beg your pardon. It's a question. No. It's either football or it's not. Now, if it's entertainment, then... No different than I did, you know, a long time ago, you know, when my predecessors tried to pawn off that wrestling was sport years ago. You know, I mean, that's And absurd. you came out and said it's sports entertainment and entertainment. the matches are staged. Right. Absolutely. So how could you possibly script a football game? You know, I, I you know, boy. You're giving me credit for a lot of talent that I, I don't think I have, okay? I mean, it was like, I mean, you have to catch the ball. I mean, you know, I mean, you have to run with the ball. You, you know, you can't script football. And, and isn't frankly, that really part of the problem? Well, because there's a whole lot of football on TV. Right. There's the NFL, and it has a long season, and all the college games. Right. Uh, and you have the World League in, in Europe, or the NFL Europe, I guess it's called. And if people just wanted to see football, they could, they could pipe in Canadian football league games. So if you can't do something significantly different at the edges, what's the real incentive to watch these games? Well, the real incentive to watch the games is because it's the best football other than NFL you can possibly watch. It's not you know, European ball. You know? It's not college ball. This is great football. And we didn't show that in our first several weeks. We also had some production problems, things of that nature. We also had the wrong announcers out there. You know, I mean, that's part of our problem as well. We, we've corrected production. We've corrected announcers as we're going forward. Are WWF announcers the right announcers for football? No, they're not. No, they're not the right Will announcers. you be able to get top flight announcers? Because I know within the business, and this is not from people necessarily who wish you ill, but within the business... Well, I'm sure there's no one who wishes me well, ill. Well, I'm sure there are many you know? people who do, but I think some <laughs> objective people... And why would they wish me ill? Hey, tell people, me, why did they want to wish me ill? The show's only, me the show's only an hour long. There are, many, uh, there are many people, we'll get to it in a minute, who consider what you've done on the WWF, while right. successful, to be objectionable. We'll get to that in a minute. A lot of first-rate announcers are reluctant to be involved in this type of programming because they feel that it carries a stigma. Well, that it's not something that would look good on their resume. On the other hand, some established guys have done it, right. but many have backed away or would have no interest. So my question to you is, if you've got to get what you call the right announcers in there, what's your talent pool for that? Uh, we'll have to create talent. Talent's out there. You have to go find it. You call yourself a risk taker. Right. You, ha you have been that. Right. If this turns out to be a grand scale failure, mm -hmm. what impact will that have on you? 
Well, you know, I get knocked on my keister, I dust myself off, and I get back up. What do you mean what impact is it going to have on me? I'm going to do the very best I can every single day. I'm a fighter, okay? I enjoy fighting, by the way. So I, I like to fight, uh, and I have tremendous confidence that this is going to be a big success. But you can't, no one can expect it to be a success in year one. You have built a brand. I mean, I'm, you know, sometimes people think that, you know, I, I have some degree of, of talent and, and whatever. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. But Vince McMahon, you know, in conjunction with NBC, can't build a brand in one year. You can't do that. The XFL and the WWF completely separate, or are you so associated in the public's mind with both that a big failure here reduces some of the juice that you have in other areas? No, not at all. I don't consider, you know, if, if it were to be a failure, no. I mean, you know, again, this is America. You know, you have the opportunity for failure in America. I'm not afraid to fail, you know, as long as I win in the long run. But I'm not going to fail this XFL, you know, despite, you know, and whether or not, you know, people out there like the fact that Vince McMahon in any way is associated with this league, you know, or they don't. I don't know what I've done to offend anyone in the sporting world. You know, I'm in the entertainment world as far as World Wrestling Federation entertainment is concerned. If someone from the sporting world doesn't like the entertainment we produce, change the channel. When you've got Vince McMahon, the founder of the XFL, and I'm out there beating the bushes trying to make this thing work, okay, I'm a different guy than the character that I play on television in World Wrestling Federation Entertainment. So hang on a second. Let me make my point. So, therefore, I think that really from a just standpoint, I think the media owes it not to me. They don't owe a damn thing to me, you know, but I think they owe it to the public. To take another look at the XFL, to take a look at the caliber of the play, to take a look at what they thought maybe it was going to be, but what it truly is today. Talk to our fans and, and cover it in a way, I mean, when you consider the fact, you know, that in that coveted male demo, we were number two, I believe, last week, in, including NBA and everything else. I mean, it's not like we don't have the big gross rating. It's 18 to 34. Right. Miles. We don't have the big gross rating, but the people that are watching us are important people. So, again, we need to build that up. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, I guess we should talk about the thing before you think. Almost. I thought Vince was much, much better on this one, at least listening to it, um, than it was yesterday. Yet. What? And snapped yet. Yeah, he, he was much better. And I, and I thought Bob Costas was very, very good on that. Um, you know what's funny to me is, like, Costas took a lot of heat for the remarks about the pregame show. And it's like, that pregame show existed. He, you know, it was on in New York. I never saw it. I heard it was terrible. Ma you know, many people said it was terrible. It got pulled after about three or four weeks. Now, Vince McMahon does not deserve the blame for it. But it was the XFL pregame show, and it was on NBC, and it does, <laughs> and it was garbage. <laughs> and... I, mean, I shouldn't say it was garbage. I didn't see it. I heard it was garbage. But if, if he saw it, which clearly he did, and said it was, it's like, you know, granted, Vince, it's not an indictment of Vince, but it is. You're built by association to an extent when it's your pregame show. Um, you know, it wasn't referencing people, something that never existed, basically. Yeah, well, the, the big criticism of Costas was that he brought it up, and that actually it was, it was um, you know, a pregame show that the stations put together as opposed to something that Vince put together, because really Vince did have nothing to do with that show. But it does have to do with the XFL. It was the XFL pregame show. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that was... Um, I, I, I do think, with the one exception uh, that someone brought up on the show yesterday, and that is, is that he really should have watched at least one full episode of Raw, and it just, or, you know, as, 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 you know, to do that. Because, you know, like, you know, I, I, mean, I just think about it. And granted, he's busy and everything like that. I think that that is a problem with mainstream media people in that they think that they don't have to watch wrestling to know wrestling. And so yeah. that's a valid criticism because, you know, someone brought, like, if I have Jim Cornette on, you know, I end up spending all weekend, you know, watching as many episodes of Ohio Valley, you know, just because I'm interviewing Jim Cornette and I need to know who those guys are. So it's, it's, it's fair. Um, aside from that, I think the most of the criticism of Costas has been really unfair. Um, I thought, as I said, Vince did a lot better on this, on this stuff. Um, the only thing that I... I was really shocked. I was unaware that... Uh... XFL was number two 
in the 18 to 24 demographic last week. 18 to 34. Okay, you know what that is? That's that's total. That's 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 that BS manipulation. You know what they do? They take the um. What they did was, they, and I'll actually go up during the break. Hopefully, let me write this down. Just okay. But what what they did was. The XFL, you know how they sell their ads as a group, as a network, right? Instead of as individual games. So when you buy it, you get the UPNT, and then that's why we always talk about the cum ratings every Monday mm-hmm. or Tuesday. Okay, so when you buy it, so what they do is they're selling to advertisers a cum rating. So what they do is they add up the rating of males 18 to 34 of the Saturday night game and the two Sunday games. And they, that is in comparison to individual sporting events from everybody else. Like if the NBA averaged, or, or not averaged, it would be if they combined the rating of all of their NBA games that are on all the different networks and local stations and everything during the week, obviously it would kill XFL. But the three XFL games combined do beat any individual NFL game. I was not say NFL. They wouldn't come close to an NFL game. But NBA game or hockey game, anything but NASCAR, the three, uh, the three whatever it is, the three XFL games combined – do not beat Na- did not beat do not beat NASCAR's one event. If NASCAR has two events, it doesn't beat the individual events, so to speak. It wouldn't beat a good college game. It wouldn't it come close with uh it won't come close this week because of the NCAA basketball tournament. But that week, yeah, it's true the three games did beat any individual sporting event on its own. Except for except for NASCAR. In that demographic. So okay. it's but yeah, it's that's a totally misleading statement, obviously. I have one question too, by the way. Vince kept mentioning in fact, Brand. they mentioned it on the show, uh, or on that show. They mentioned it on Raw, SmackDown. Anyway, this whole thing with the media. And I just want to know, if the media took another look, like Vince is asking them to do, what good would come of that? Because yeah, it's, it's, it comes to the same conclusion. It's still minor league football. You know what? They get more Even coverage. Though I'm saying this. Even if the media said, this is the greatest football show we've ever seen, and uh, you should all watch it, does that necessarily mean absolutely anything? That means a little bit. It doesn't mean the difference between a 2.4 and a 9.5. It does mean the difference between a 2.4 and a 2.8, maybe. Maybe. Okay. So. And that's why everyone strives for mainstream media. You know, like with silly wrestling angles to get the attention. It does make a little bit of difference. Not enough. Not enough. In, well, I don't know. The one other thing, you know, where he kept talking about brand, 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 between him and Bischoff. <laughs> the brand, I, I, I'm, it's like, I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm so sick of hearing it because that's what Bischoff with the brand names. It's like we're building a brand. You know, you know what I mean? It's like I, I, I don't I don't buy a brand with a negative stigma is being built. No. Uh, whether it was WCW, um, brand name, it, it has a negative stigma. XFL has a very negative stigma. That's why the ratings drop every week. You know, if Vince's ratings started high, okay, dropped down like we all knew it would. Everyone knew it was going to be what it was the first week. Went down and then slowly was creeping up. You know what? He, you say, he, give it time. But it drops every week. And I'm not saying he may, he may, he'll pull it off. But there's no evidence of it. Yeah. Because, because it's not coming back. And, you know, we'll talk about, like, you know, how great a time people have at the live events. You know, people do. But also, on the same token, the attendance in most markets drops each, each successive game. So that means that more people are not coming back. Uh, not, or, or it doesn't mean more people aren't coming back. But it just means no, it people. means more people are not coming back than new people are going in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? But people are not coming. But some people are not coming back, obviously. Yeah. So, anyway, that's... I also what, love what, the line. <laughs> Gossip asks him, you know, would you ever consider fixing a game? And he's just, just act totally appalled, like, what a ridiculous statement. Well, like, you know, how could anyone thing- possibly think that Vince McMahon would fix anything? But, you know, the thing on that one also is is that there's two different words. There's fixing and working. You can't work a football game unless you make it a play of a football game or a movie of a football game. You can fix football games. You know, you, what you do is you, you get one team not to win, and you don't even tell the other team, like, like you fix a boxing match. When you have a fixed boxing match, it's not worked out ahead of time like a professional wrestling match, where, you know, like, oh, I'll do this and you do this and this is our high spot. It's like the guy who's going to lose goes in there and goes, the first time you get hit with a good punch, you lay down. Mm-hmm. And you can fix a football game by telling the quarterback, your team loses, and he fumbles at a key time, throws a key interception. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying he would do it, but it can be done. And it's yeah. been done. NFL games have been fixed. College games have been fixed. I don't know how, no one knows how regularly, but it can happen. And when there's gambling involved and when you've got 
if you have people in your own organization gambling and you're courting gamblers and the players are not making a lot of money, that increases your odds. If you get a quarterback that's making forty five grand a year as a base, as opposed to a million whatever in the NFL, and a gambler comes to him with a scheme of, you know, you, I can give you a $15,000 bonus, you know, you do this, this, and this at a key time. I'm not saying this has happened once, but is it possible? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't really want to talk more about XFL because what's going on in wrestling is far bigger um, today. Let's uh, start with Jordan in Toronto. Jordan, what's going on? Hi there. How's it going? It's going really good. Okay. Uh, just uh, about the uh, WCW uh, sale, I uh, keep hearing that... Uh, Vince is one of the guys looking to buy it. Is that uh, true or not? Or not not buy it, but he's looking to uh, he's looking to you know do the angle. He's looking okay. to buy the name. And he's not going to buy the company. Um, yeah. No, you know because it, it, for the same reason Vince Vince's interest in buying the company was to lock up those time slots so nobody else could get him and it would give him a monopoly and it would be a huge barrier of entry for anyone wanting to start up. When the company is not going to guarantee you those time slots, there's nothing to buy worth that much money and nobody can get it so there's no there's no point and he can you know he doesn't have to really do anything he's, he's if, if they close down he'll get all the talent he wants but he won't be able to do the interpromotional thing without getting sued because he doesn't know the WCW name he can do like a fake interpromotional thing without mentioning the name but probably the name in that regard that name's probably worth a couple of million dollars if he's going to do the interpromotional thing right using the name so that's that's what's of value to him yeah I was thinking it would be kind of cool if he uh, kept the uh, you know did like an interpromotional thing, but used uh, WCW as more as a cruiserweight sort of thing, because that was you know when they were strong, that was the thing that kept everyone tuned uh, in with the uh, you know. You're talking momentum. about the wrong guy. Yeah. You know, I mean, if it was another guy, you know, if it was another promoter with a different value system, um, different mindset on what wrestling is, maybe, maybe yes, maybe no, but uh, not, you know, you know, it's, 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 he's not keeping them separate, so it's not really, you know, it's, it's not going to happen. How does the whole trademark thing work? Is it like? Um Time Warner AOL has a trademark on WCW, and even if the company died, they would have it for a specific number of years? I believe so, yeah. Okay. All right, that's, uh, that's all I had. I, I just thought it would be kind of cool. Just got the Ross report here. Uh, a couple of notes I want to mention. Um, Rikishi may be out until after WrestleMania. He may not be ready to come back from a broken eardrum. Um, he's putting over... Mick Foley's doing a Chef Boyer D commercial next week. He says... Kurt Angle is the most talented performer I have ever been around in this business with his experience level. Which actually, you know what? It's true, probably. I think all around town. I've seen guys... You know what? I don't know that I've ever seen a worker at two years in as good as Kurt Angle. I've seen guys close. I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen them quite as good, but if you throw in the interview ability and, and, um, and everything else, uh, acting ability, um, he may be the most talented that I've ever seen, too. Um, let's see... Uh, what does he say? He says, David Taylor will not be doing Tough Enough, but he may be on WF Television, perhaps with with Re- William Regal in some form. Hmm. Uh, uh, let's see. What else does he talk about? Um, Raven may turn into a fan favorite. Uh, looks like... Okay, then he... Uh, Edge's lower back's almost 100%. They expect him back uh, for tomorrow night's show in Toronto. Uh, this is what he says. There's been a lot of... <laughs> and, and I would say very um, applicable. Um, you know, it, it's, it is. I, I think it is quite hypocritical of the WWF lawyers uh, telling Jerry Lawler, you know, not to, uh, you know, take those email addresses of those people off, and at the same time telling people to, like, you know, do the same thing with sports. Wars. Anyway, this is this is the Jim Ross response to that. I want to address a few emails I received this week regarding Jerry Lawler and our call to action regarding the XFL. I mentioned last week here I wasn't sure that the King having fans email our writers was a good idea, simply because the writers are not empowered to bring the King and the Cat back to the Federation. They write, but they do not get involved in personnel decisions. Actually, that would be Jim. Just email him, right? <laughs> Actually, it's Vince. it's Vince. However, the members of the media we asked our fans to contact do make decisions as to what they cover as it relates to the XFL and other sports. They seem to be two separate issues. <laughs> um, you know, but it's, it's the same. I mean, I guess they're separate issues in a sense, but, you know, when they're like confiscating banners, um, a company that's confiscating banners pro Jerry Lawler at their television and then telling you, you know, that like, you know, I don't know. I just I just find it totally hypocritical. Uh, the other the other aspect is is that the XFL actually gets more coverage. If you and, and granted they, they draw more people per game, so that and that's probably why they deserve more coverage in a sense, than minor league football or minor league basketball. 
They get way more than either of those. And that's what this is, is minor league football. They get great coverage. for They get tremendous coverage for a minor league sport. They don't get coverage for major league sport. And the XFL games that I have seen get more coverage than what I would call low-level Division I football that draws anywhere from 7,000 paid to about 30,000 paid, depending on the market. That would be like equivalent to um, San Jose State, which is where I live. Um, on a national basis, the San Francisco Demons game, I'm sure, gets far more coverage than the San Jose State game. And from an interest level wide, as far as paid attendance, they're roughly at the same level. So that's, they're not being unfairly, it's not unfair at all. This is what he says. The Bob Costas Vince McMahon confrontation on HBO Live will not lead to a one on one match at WrestleMania. And he says it was the highest rated Costas show to date, which it may have been. Um, I'd rather see Costas in the ring than Linda. No, nah, I don't want to see either of them. And then uh, this is the last one. Um, let's see what he has to say about this. He goes, it's been a challenging week for yours truly, especially when you read you were one of the XFL's biggest mistakes. Um, let's huh. see. This is what he says. And who said that, thing by is the this. way? Vince McMahon. Good old Vince. The thing is this. Those statements certainly sting a little, but they damn sure don't kill you. No, they don't kill you. <laughs> and, and it was, and it's, you know what? You know, we said it before. That is so unfair to him. I've been criticized my entire adult life, oftentimes by my family, for being in the wrestling business, and I'm still here 20 years later. Words only destroy you if you allow them. I'm proud as hell to be in this business, and so my focus is to do my job to the best of my ability and improve with every opportunity. It's that simple. The Federation has been and always will be my top professional priority, and I truly believe my best broadcasts are still to come. As for the XFL, I thoroughly believe in the concept, and I love being part of it and getting to know those passionate players and coaches. My tenure in the XFL may be short-lived. I guess that means he's definitely not coming back next season. But I've got to be honest with you. I'm having a blast doing those games. Last week's game with Dick Butkus was the most fun I've had this season. I'm sure it is because even though Dick Butkus isn't much of an announcer, if you're Jim Ross's age, I mean, Dick Butkus, you know, working with Dick Butkus for a guy who's a football fan, I got no doubt that was like a thrill, one of the thrills of his life. Uh, let's see. Number 51 and I are set to broadcast Saturday night's contest between the New York New Jersey Hitmen and the Memphis Maniacs at Giant Stadium. It will air in New York and in Memphis. Okay? So there you go. That's what he has to say. On uh, that, um, you know, I was thinking about uh, the whole invasion angle concept with WWF, and I don't even really know how valuable the WCW name really would be, or how important it would be, because I mean, the whole the whole Hall and Nash thing in '95 uh, or '96 or whatever. I mean, they couldn't say they were WWF guys because of legal issues. I mean, they hinted it and everything like that, but the whole thing was. Fans knew where these guys came from, and they knew what this was supposed to be. I mean, if you all of a sudden had, you know, a group of guys, Goldberg, I hate to say it, but Nash, Steiner, a bunch of guys show up on WCW TV, it wouldn't even matter what they were called or where they said they came from because everybody would know. Yeah, you're right. Um, anyway, let's go to Zoe. Zoe, what's up? Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Hey. We're doing very oh. well. Okay, uh, number one, uh, on the, on a, a slight tip big on, on the XFL, uh, by being the first season, I am recording all the games, including the pre-shows. And if Vince did not know about the pre-shows, how come part of it was shown at WWF New York, uh, restaurant? <laughs> anyway, um, um, that was, that was a excellent point there. It was in this market, we didn't get the pre-show, so I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know what? I think that, Vince knows about he, that at the pre-show. Okay, I think Vince knows about that. You know what? I think that all of those people in the media that criticize Bob Costas for that point now are so full of it. Okay, let's go. Thank you very much. By the way, you better hold especially, on to the they'll be worth something someday. Especially, especially Opie and Anthony, because those were the ones that were having a field day with Bob Costas making that mistake. And since they produced the show and they were the on-air talent, or I say the producer, they were the on-air talent on the show, and they knew that it was coming from WF New York, they knew that Vince then did obviously have some affiliation with it, didn't he? Okay. 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 But but uh, my my main thing is that okay. I, um, I was hearing you guys show about about uh, WCW going downhill. Unfortunately, uh, it's sad because it should be some kind of competition going on, but it's not exactly a shock. And when I listened to the uh, inter- the, the 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 show before last, I guess involving Bischoff being interviewed. It seemed like he was going just to, to to just lay low, but but make everything the way it was before. Meaning he would have all his buddies take care of all the booking and all that, and give all the lower guys hardly anything at all, which means dumb ratings. So I think 
uh, WCW, it's a shame it's going down the tube. It shouldn't be. I was, I was hoping that Vince might buy it and that he would, would convince Turner to make it a spinoff, meaning uh, I'm sure Vince, if he had Channel 13, to put WCW on for my for like maybe a day uh, during the week or whatever, they would be more than glad to do so because because Vince because of the because of the these um, success of SmackDown. But um, who knows? Maybe that might not maybe not happen. But I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't that, know. That, maybe I'm hoping that, that new Paul Heyman could be a spinoff the, announcer. The thing is, Vince Vince, Vince doesn't Vince doesn't want to produce more television. They're producing. They're they're at their limit when it comes to the amount of television oh, they can produce a week with my interviews. They have to replace TVs. one of them. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to go and send those guys out on another day on the road and do more television tapings. It would, it would not be, because that would speed the decline of the business due to, you know, overexposure of the, of the same product. Okay, well, anyway, okay, well, then, and my last thing is that um, I, I got the last issue of The Torch. Surprised me, they had this thing on, on Kevin Nash and, and, um, and Wade Keller jammed Shawn Michaels and them about saying how the Eagles interfered with, 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 with a lot of backstage locker room and yada, yada, yada. That was the first comprehensive thing I read about how people actually felt about Shawn Michaels. Shocking, but very interesting to know that. <laughs> but um, as for WrestleMania, I hope they do that pre-WrestleMania thing they did before last year. It was nice. I did record it. And uh, they're not going to do it. They're not, it's not uh, going to be done. Our cable station here show a repeat, so I'll be seeing a repeat of it again. Yeah, they're not doing a new, they're not doing a new one of those. But it is going to be four hours long, though. Four hours long, yeah, four hours of wrestling. I don't think they're going to have a long post-game. I think they're just going to have a lot of matches, and the main events are going to be given like 30, 20, 20, 30 minutes. I think there's going to be three or four real long matches. The matches that, you know, like if they do an angle Benoit, they're going to be given time to have a hell of a match. And, um, you know, obviously Rock and Austin, uh, Helmsley's going to be given a lot of time, you know. Um, oh. and that might be tough, but he will. Yeah. And, okay. and uh, you know, that's... that's okay, and one last thing is that I, I was curious one day, and I called the L.A. Times and asked how come they, do, they didn't have any wrestling news. The reaction I got, I <laughs> number imagine. one, lady, it's fake, lady. Why do you call and ask us about some dumb wrestling? It's fake. And I think I would quit my own job if they decided to have wrestling news in the L.A. Times. I mean, this guy went off. <laughs> well, it depends if you call the sports, <laughs> if you call the sports section. I can understand their thoughts to a degree. If you call the entertainment section, they don't got a leg to stand on. No, but uh, I did because call it's very, very popular. It's very popular. If you call the sports, they they, they they got a great out. It's not a sport, yeah. and it is. It's a valid. That's a valid. That's a valid excuse. I mean, but I, no basketball player, or football player, could, could ever graduate from, from from a wrestling school. They couldn't. Oh yeah, they could. The, yeah, they the, could. Uh, training. Yeah, they could. Pl- yeah, yeah, they could. Yeah, they could. Um, and we had we had bad news. Allen here, bad news. Allen here said that wrestling was a piece of cake next after he, after he did all that judo. I mean, it's 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 not easy. But don't think that like a guy who's a well, you know, I mean, obviously if a guy's really really tall or something. But like you know, Ron Reese, Ron Reese graduated from a wrestling school. He's a terrible wrestler, but he wasn't you know he wasn't you know he couldn't play in the NBA either. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you had Car, you know, you had Carl Malone. I mean, you saw Carl Malone in that in that one match. If Carl Malone had the training that an average professional wrestler had with his size and his physique and his charisma, oh, come on, that guy would be a superstar, or close to it. That's true, too. And again, on your comment on Kurt Angle, I am, I am surprised that... Or Kevin, Kevin so Green's so another one. So that is shocking. Yeah, Kevin Green's another one. Kevin Green had no formal training. It's better than, you know, a great percentage of the guys that are active today and most of the independent guys. But Kevin Green also had personality plus. You know, Kevin Green, I don't think, had a great personality, but, oh. you know... Okay, you know, well, thank you, guys. Okay. Okay, take care. Thanks. Bye. Okay, you're very welcome. All right, I want to hit some emails here. Uh, Sean says, if WCW falls, I think there will sure be a startup promotion that will open up jobs for the business. It will just be too, there's too much talent out there to not have jobs. Now, whether it's successful is another question. Oh, there will be startups. But I'm afraid, like, you know, WXO startups, you spend a whole bunch of money, you buy a bunch of TV, and all of a sudden you're out of money in three weeks. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen it, like, I mean, like, one of the things I, I you know, there's, wow, there's, I, I, urban. What? Urban, exactly. I mean, I went through this thing with roller derby when I was a kid. And, I mean, when roller derby fall, I mean, it's the same exact thing. There were two competing organizations. They had this big boom period. Then one of the organizations ran out of money, folded. One company had it. We, we went through this whole thing. Within a year, the big company that had all the talent for all the political reasons fell apart. I'm not saying WF's going to fall apart in a year, but WWF will get stale. Uh, I don't have any doubt of that in a year, two years, whatever. Um, and... What happened after that was, yeah, there were all these people, all these skaters that were out of work, and people going like, you know, roller derby was a real big deal three years ago. Let's bring it back. And there were, 
you know, revival attempts after revival attempts after revival attempts. I mean, we just had one, you know, 25 years later. Mm-hmm. But they never made it, every single one of them. Uh, not to say that, that, you know, wrestling's done for good, because I don't believe that either. It's just not easy. Uh, let's see. Uh, There's nothing here. Um, oh, yeah, China's going to be on law tomorrow. Uh, I don't, don't think there's anything. I heard that was a hell of an interview. Uh, it sounded like um, if the deal's off, then what's the deal with the wrestler's contract at WCW? I think they're going to find out um, probably a week from Tuesday. Um, but, you know, I think that they're going to be kept under contract at least until they're done negotiating the sale. Uh, but the key, you know, unless TBS is going to promise somebody time slots, there's nothing to buy. Buy, buy a whole bunch of million-dollar contracts with no TV? Come on. If WCW folds, what happens? Okay, they've got that. Uh, do you think that Fox will be the one to step up and put wrestling on their TV? I don't know. I mean, there's been negotiations with them. Uh, they're probably the only hope. But like we saw with ECW, you know, I mean, you know, Paul Heyman talked to everyone in the world. He got no deal, you know, and had to fold. Um, and Eric not... is a deal maker, though. He has that. Eric is, yeah, Eric's a better deal maker, but he didn't make this one. Yeah. But that was, you know, yeah, yeah, Eric, you're right. Eric, Eric is a better deal maker than Paul. Uh, he better be good, though, because he, if it's not Fox, there's pretty much no one else. I mean, E and everybody else, you know, they're not they're not going to do it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And it would, I don't think, uh, like a network, like, I don't even think, I get E. What's that really going to do? Does it really have a... Uh... No, no, well, I, I was just using them as just an example, and they won't do it. They they will not take any wrestling programming. Mm-hmm. This is Wade Keller says Eric Bischoff's talking to Fox. I mean, Eric's... Er- Eric's been talking, I think we, I don't know if we've talked about it on the show, Eric, he's been talking to Fox all along consistently, because his idea was the promotion versus promotion thing, where he would send Hogan and those guys to Fox, form their own company, and then they would feud with WCW, you know, um, you know, I mean, that was his whole brainchild. So, yeah, he's been talking to Fox all along. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know where it stands. I mean, if, if he had Fox locked up, they still might have bought the company. So I don't think, Fo- you, you can't buy it without Fox locked up. But if Fox is still locked up, you probably could. And I think that tells me that, you know, Fox is... I mean, again, this, these deals, they're not going to... You just can't snap your fingers and make these deals. they got to go through person after person. All it takes is one guy and Fox just go, I was actually, I was actually at the table with this. I can tell you exactly how it goes. We have a very tough advertising time, and this is not the time to try a new risky programming. <laughs> Got that speech about a week ago. <laughs> uh, let me see... Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, are you saying there's no hope? I would not say no hope, but it does not look good. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. It says Jerry Jarrett is interested in buying WCW. Yeah, for a yeah for a low price. But what is you know as, as owning it? He's not going to put the kind of money in. Um, you know that, that's you know that's not even WCW. That's like a USWA. Uh, where do you think wrestling would be today had Vince not bought all the top talent from the territories in the 80s? I know it's pretty much impossible to say, but take a stab at it. Mm. There would still be one or two dominant companies because cable changed the whole way the business was. If it was not Vince McMahon doing it, it would have been Vern Gagne or Jim Crockett. It was an inevitability. Um, so I think it would have been, here we are 16 years, 17 years later, it would be the exact same thing. If it was not Vince, what would have happened was Vern would have done it, and Crockett would have done it, and Vince, out of retaliation, would have done it, and Vince was smarter than they were, and Vince would have beat him. So it would have been the same thing. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, let me just get one more thing. How ironic is that the very last WCW pay-per-view will be Scott, Scott Steiner versus Diamond Dallas Page when these two and their respective ages and real-life personalities so sum up the reason why WCW is done, and how ironic is it that literally, with, with WrestleMania, the symbolic show of the WF Empire will also be the first show of the new era of the WF Monopoly. I want to get through a few of these things. Um, Al, real quick, what day is Ken Shamrock scheduled to be on? Is uh, he originally scheduled to be on today? Ten, well, he was, yeah, he was supposed to be on today tentatively. We have him scheduled for uh, Tuesday, April 10th. That has not been confirmed yet. I'm um, waiting for Bob Shamrock to get back to me. It doesn't seem like it's going to be a problem, but then again, you never know. Yeah. Um, and, and, again, uh, did Eddie talk anything about uh, Ken's match with Ibrahim Johnson as far as if it's going to happen or what the status is? Uh, no, we were actually trying to get a comment from uh, the Lions then, they, uh, and, again, no comment from them. So. Okay, because that's definitely something that's up in the air. 
Uh, let's see. Just uh, think about that WrestleMania post show only being an hour. Yeah, I know. Well, this is a flyby. Well, I have to get to bed sometime that night, you know. <laughs> it's only what uh, uh, ten o'clock on the West Coast there for uh, for you guys when the show's over. It's one a.m. over here, so that's right. <laughs> yeah. So, but that'll be fun. Yeah, we'll be doing that right after WrestleMania. So, right the big four hour show. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, Vince absolutely knows about the pregame show. The only time I watched it, Vince McMahon was the guest. <laughs> One of the opening Anthony guys even said, I knew we would be working for you someday, Vince. Oh. That's it. Oh, what does that say? Hey, guys, just got an email from uh, Alan Sharp at uh, WCW. And yes. basically, the, it's an announcement saying, Effective Tuesday, March 27th, WCW programming will begin a period of hiatus. During this hiatus... WCW will review its programming plans and determine the course of future WCW branded entertainment events. More information will be released as it is made available. Okay. Something we need to know. Uh, let's see. Uh, Maybe they'll combine the um, April hiatus with the May hiatus. <laughs> That'll be the next press release. Um, this is Jared 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 yeah, I'm really bummed out today, but I have one question. If WCW ceases to exist, how do you think it will affect yourself and other journalists? One would think your job would be much tougher covering only one national promotion. It's going to affect everyone greatly. There's a lot of things. I'll tell you what. The future of, of the journalism aspect of wrestling that really boomed in the last couple of years, that is going to change greatly because of the, the basically, the what's going to be the, I don't want to say collapse, but the, the collapse of the web economy. Uh, there's going to be great changes in the next year. I don't know exactly what they're going to be. There's going to be a fallout, and it's going to, you know, coverage is going to have to be different. Um, I, you know, it depends on who starts up and things like that. I mean, um, but yeah, it's going to be, di- it's going to be different. I mean, I, I could tell you, and I don't think that Brian and I will have any trouble filling pages, um, but there, you know, I mean, it's going to, it's a question. Are people going to be interested in all the various smaller wrestling companies and international wrestling companies, um, or only WF? And if they're only interested in WWF, um, it's going to be it's going to be a challenge. Uh, it says, why does Vince McMahon take everything Bob Costas says so personally? If he approaches the debate discussion not a personal attack, he might have come off better. Um, Sean Robinson says, low rent blam. Vince begins the descent that carries through the second half of the Costas interview. Vince is like Satan in Paradise Lost, screaming in anger, demanding respect, broiling in egotistical denial. A sad anti-hero whose only grace is his indefeatable will, and even that is misdirected. It's from Mark who says, the fact the pregame show aired on an NBC affiliate does not vindicate Costas in any way. Uh, I am definitely not a supporter of Vince Mc- uh, a supporter or defender of Vince McMahon, but Bob Costas didn't have the savvy to figure out that the pregame show in that area was not a national show or even put together by the XFL in it itself, that he has little business on television. Um, I think that when he talked about things that had to do with the XFL and he brought up the pregame show called the XFL pregame show, that has something to do with the XFL and the fact that it was on in the New York market and the L.A. market and many of the big markets. Um, you know, the fact, uh, you know, come on. He didn't the claim XFL it pre-game. was a national pregame show, did he? What? He didn't claim it was a national pregame show, did he? No, he said the pregame show. He said there was a pregame show and it was horrible. And there was yeah. a pregame show and it was horrible. Yep. And and Vince was out there trying to pretend he knew nothing of it when he was a, a guest on it and they filmed it from WF New York. God, don't, you know, uh, what can I say? Blow a gasket, come on. Nah, nah, nah I, I thought nah, that nah. was funny last night. Someone emailed me, and um, the letter started out with, please don't blow a gasket. And I thought, you know, did I really well, you did, you go did that last, last weekend that people have to start these letters like this now? You did, you did go, but you know what? The letters on the website uh, last night that you put up, they were even better than the day before. Yeah, it was great. Awesome letters. There was a letter from the guy from Death Valley Driver. Yeah. Awesome, that was awesome letter. The, the last letter and feedback last night. Everyone go up there and read that. Oh, my God. I mean, it's just like, wow. You know, like, those letters that you were getting, like, last week, you know, it's like night and day. Uh, let's see. That guy might email happen? me. He goes, um, I thought that, uh, I think he says, like, I thought the first paragraph was good and it all went downhill from there. And I thought, um, no, it didn't. Um... This says, Ross knows how smart Triple H is with a statement about the Undertaker-Triple H match saying, quote, if it takes place. And, you know, they're thinking of doing a tag um, where it would be Undertaker and Kane against Triple H and Big Show. So, yeah. And it says, Chris from Kenta, who says, are you going to be on live audio wrestling after WrestleMania? No, I'm not. That, that'll be, I'm usually on every Sunday um, after the pay-per-views, but this one I'm going to have to do this show here, so I will not be on live audio wrestling uh, after WrestleMania. 
Uh, let's see. As a professional designer, Eric and Vince are right on the money that building a brand takes a tremendous amount of time. Certainly built on a number of things, but negative press does have a tremendous bearing on a brand and how it's viewed by the public. The public is constantly exposed to negative press about Vince McMahon and the WF. The first logical reaction upon hearing that the XFL is a WF product, is a, pro, is a product of Vince McMahon, will be negative. Uh, let's see. Um... WF Sunday Night is scheduled to be rerun on MTV four hours after the live show this week and next week at least. Do you have a feeling? Do you know why they're doing it? I uh, don't know. I should maybe I'll ask. Because um, they rerun everything on MTV about five million times. Yes. Um, interestingly, Vince complains that he's interviewed by people who don't know the wrestling business, but then he won't let anyone who knows the wrestling business interview him. <laughs> <laughs> and this from Kyle goes, he's the wow, the number two promotion now. You know what the number two promotion is now is UFC. No question. They sold out the last show. They're the only one left on pay-per-view. <laughs> they have no television. And they have the number two promotion. Wow sent they out have... a press release recently. I wish I knew where it was. The Wow press release? They're done, too. Yeah, it was basically... I think it, it said something basically like, we're going we started, to be running reruns. And we're going to we start no running reruns. And we pay for TV. So, yeah, they, basically uh, said that we're, they basically said we're done, with, but, but, but we're going to start running reruns now. Yeah. yeah. We're not filming any new shows. Um, let's see. All right. Uh, anyway, let's go back to the calls. Let's go to Miles in Texas. Miles, what's going on? Hello? Yes. Miles. All right. Miles, what's going on? Yeah, uh, I was just wondering, man, what do you think is going to happen to uh, Goldberg? I mean, are they going to try to use him as a as a way to sell the company, are they going to release him and let him go and do his own thing, or will he just retire? He's going to be—he's going to be one of the bargaining chips. If they, as long as they're trying to sell it, they won't. He'll be the last. He will be the last guy cut. I will tell you that. Right. When he's cut, then you know that they won't be sold. He's no longer paid. He'll go to the WWF. Right. I mean, I mean, he, he, he could reasonably, you know, be pretty big in the WWF, and if they, you know, but if he's going to be the last one released, he's going to be sitting on the sideline for what three years. Uh, they're, they're not going to sit there for three years waiting to sell this thing. It's, it's going to be three, four months, or they're going to throw it. They're, they're not going to be spending all the money on all these on all these big contracts for that long of a period of time without just saying, okay, you know, that's it, it's folding. You know, they're going to do it as long as long as there's serious negotiations with serious suitors. They'll be willing to spend the money so they can get like a fifty million dollar payoff or a thirty million dollar payoff. But if it's like a two or three million dollar payoff, I mean, the salaries are almost that much. So it's like it's a business decision when. When there's no real suitors that are willing to pony up big money for this thing, and there may not be, but when that happens, that's when they will fold the company, and that's when these guys will all be free agents at that point. Uh, well, if he does go to WWF, I mean, do you think they'd you know really push him, or are they just use him to put over other guys? I mean, I mean, I'm a big Goldberg fan. It's pretty much the only reason I put up with crap from WCW last year. Um, you know, I just you know, it's up to get dark again because he hadn't even been a main eventer in WCW for two years. It's it's up to Vince. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. I mean, there's so many, there's so many reasons that you could go either way. I mean, there's the reason of, um, you know, he's going to have to do jobs and pay his dues and and you know prove himself. Theory, in which case he'll be dead because it he'll it, it won't work. Or they'll just go in there and go, we've got a chance to make a lot of money. We've got a great angle, you know, we've got a great angle sitting in our lap with Bill Goldberg against The Rock or Austin or whomever the top guy is. And we're going to get him ready by steamrolling our guys because that's the big money payoff. Yeah. Um, and then do it. And they're going to choose one or the other. And I, it's only Vince is the only one who's, who knows because because he's going to make that decision. Can you can you explain to me one more thing? I mean, WCW, they had him for for three years now, and he's a one-time champion. And he's the last champion they had that drew a dime. You know, I mean, they were in the ratings where even they were getting good pay-per-view buy rates back then. And, and, and uh, let me think about they that. were. Oh, when he was champion, yeah, they were still strong. Then you're right, you're right, yeah, you're right. They yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. they, they, yeah, they still did the match where Nash beat Goldberg was a big pay per view yeah, success. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah he got over a one. I'm about right. Right at a one, and yeah, well, you know, then that was that was that was the beginning of the end when he lost. The, the end was when they were Hulk Hogan's uh, shoulders hit the next, the mat, the next Nacho when Nash poked him. That was the end. I or, thought it was, it was, was Hogan poked Nash, and you're right. And there was Bam Bam Bigelow. When Hogan poked Na- when Hogan poked Nash and Nash went down, that yeah. was the beginning of the end. No question, that was a horrible, horrible business decision on so many levels. They do not understand what wrestling fans want, and and they, you know the people running that company. Okay, when, when, I'll tell you this: Brad Siegel and Vince Russo and Eric Bischoff. You know, well, I personally like Eric Bischoff, but this is the reality. 
they do deserve this fate of this company because they did not care what the fans wanted and or understand this combination. They, they didn't understand. And I mean, when you're in business, you got to when you're in a business catering to fans, you've got to understand what the fans don't want more than anything. You know, they don't want to be insulted. They don't want a one finger push and the guy laying down. That's not the right kind of heat. And they didn't get it. So the people were throwing things. So they thought, wow, people are throwing things. We're gonna, you know, that's great. It's like I mean, a, well, what about uh, some smaller talent? Like, man, I really, you know, there's a th- you know, Lance Storm. I mean, he seems like he could be pretty good in WWF. He can talk, and he can certainly wrestle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, I, I think Lance Storm will get a chance in the WWF. You know, they'll, they'll give him a tryout, and they'll probably sign him up, you know, like Jerry Lynn for $100,000 a year or some, you know, some number like that, and he'll get a chance to either prove himself or or he'll just kind of be there like Raven, and, you know, he'll be around, and we'll know they're there, but they don't really, you know, I don't know. He'll get a, he'll be there, though. I, I, I think he'll get a job. Depressing name, but y'all, I appreciate y'all taking my call. Okay, thanks, thanks. very much. Okay. Um, yes, it's not good news. Let's go to Chris. Chris, what's up? Uh, hi, how's it going? Hey. It's going good. Uh, I just wanted to say, I was reading the uh, figure four, like, from about two or three weeks ago, and the, the, when Brian was doing this review about the whole Trish Stephanie thing out of the limo, and he said Trish popped out of the limousine like a whack-a-mole, that was just one of the, that was just one of the funniest things I've read in a long time. The, the whack-a-mole thing just kind of threw me off guard, and I just thought it was hilarious, so. Do you remember the whack-a-mole, Dave? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You don't remember that? Oh, yeah. No. No. Well. I like the carnival, the little things you hit with the, uh, the big... The mallet. Padded mallet. Yeah, padded mallet, yeah. Anyway, I just I thought that was funny, so I just wanted you know, I at least appreciated that. Um, as far as the WCW thing, I was a little confused. You, you guys are saying that Bischoff's negotiating with Fox and so on. If, I thought Bischoff was part of the Fusion thing. If the Fusion thing... That, that was all part of that was uh, that was, that was some from the very they they've been doing that one from the beginning. The whole idea, if it all worked out, was for Hogan to go on Fox and feud with WCW and do the interpromotional thing. I mean that was like the pie in the sky idea of turning it around. Okay, so but, Fox was always you know I mean that's part of the fusion thing. Yeah, that was what you know. I mean that's uh, the okay. big payoff that they were hoping for and uh, that might and it might have worked. But you know everything everything had to fall in place and. It didn't. What can I say? It just, you know, it required a lot of, you know, it's like, it's like so much in business. If things go right, and it's at, you know, it's, and so much it's just out of your control. If one guy makes a call, you can be a star. And if one guy makes a different call, uh, then you're not even in business. Mm-hmm. So then what's the, so let's say Vince goes ahead and buys the WCW name. What does that mean? Then the, that the, the company that was formerly WCW still exists and somebody could pick that up, just have to name it something different or? No, 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 no. He wouldn't do it unless the company folds. Or he could buy. He could. I suppose he could buy the company um, if he wanted to. I don't That'd know why. That would be such a waste, though. Yeah, I don't. I don't why, see that. Why happen. do that? I mean, um, basically, it would only, be the company okay, told, He would get the name and uh, buy who he wanted. It was obviously they'll be free agents, and then uh, anyone else who wanted to start up would just pick up the pieces and whoever's left. Okay, I will give you a good reason why he might. Okay. Buy the whole company. Buy the whole company. Yeah. Okay. Let's just say that, that a deal that, that somehow the fusion thing comes alive again because they get a guarantee from Fox. Let's say, let's say Eric Bischoff gets a guarantee from Fox. And then fusion, they got their TV now, okay? Because that's the whole thing. Without the TV, it's not worth anything. With TV, it's worth something. And they're about to go on there, and Vince goes, you know what? I may have competition, so I'm going to spend $1 more and buy it to shut it down. Mm-hmm. He, it might be worth it to him, so he, does, he, he buys his way out of any future fights. Because... Even if it's not competitive now, I mean, that's like saying in 1993, WCW was not competitive and Vince could have laughed at it, but if he could have bought it then, he would have avoid, avoided 1996, 1997, and 1998. And he's not, you know, I'm not saying he would do it, but it's, it's, it's a reason I could come up with. But doesn't he need the competition? I mean, in some Yeah, I mean, if he didn't level? have 96, 97, yeah, 98, exactly. what would he today? It may not be what it is today. I mean, yeah, but do you think he wants to relive that either? I, he may not want to relive those those days, but I think he knows his goal, that his goal from day one was to have the whole thing. He finally won after 17 years. But isn't he smart enough to know that that ultimately that's not going to benefit him? I mean, I don't happen. know. He did. He what? He 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 certainly wasn't with that mindset in the 80s. Sometimes it's mean, sure. like you think maybe this guy thinks that everything that happened during that period was uh, just Vince. He had some great ideas. He made Steve Austin. It didn't matter what the other guys were doing. It was all him. Without well, them, he would be where he was today. The one thing but here's, the other, here's the other thing, too. If he doesn't have competition, yeah, you're right, but let's look, let's look at it a different way from Vince. I don't have competition. All these guys, when their contracts are due, you know, they got no leverage on me to, to get a half a million dollar downside. Yeah. You know, they're going to, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Vince will, Vince will be so powerful within this industry 
if there's no competition, that that power may be, you know, worth having that monopoly to him. But he'll, be, he'll be powerful within the industry, but let's say if the industry does, you know, start to deflate a little bit because of... But, but, but here's the thing. Vince is very, very confident. Vince, Vince McMahon does not believe... I don't think for a second Vince McMahon believes that if WCW goes down, that the popularity of his product will go down in two years. I mean, and, 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 and there's no guarantee that it will. I think yeah, there's I a good know. chance it will. But I don't know that... If I'm Vince McMahon, I don't know that Vince McMahon is thinking that, that way. Vince McMahon may be thinking that you know, now that there's no horrible brand out there to uh, ruin the stigma of wrestling and it's all me and it's all good and good entertainment on national TV, it's only going to get bigger and I'm going to have, you know, more top stars and I'm going to make more money than ever. He may be thinking that and he may be right. Yeah, I guess I suppose that's true. But the other thing, okay, another thing I sort of understand about this whole WCW situation is originally when he was looking to buy it, wasn't the holdup that he, that um, uh, Viacom didn't want him to have the, the TBS TV and that, the, yes, the and there is not, and that would not, without CBS TV, there is no holdup, but without CBS TV. But he didn't really, you know what Vince wanted? Vince wanted a barrier of entry to somebody else. He doesn't need to buy that barrier of entry, because the barrier of entry was, if he bought and got on CBS, nobody else could get on CBS, and that's the only other station of comparable size that seemed interested in wrestling, since USA clearly is not interested in wrestling anymore. But, but, um, so, so... He doesn't need to buy. He doesn't need to spend a lot of money to buy that barrier of entry. If Jamie Kellner has said, you know, TBS and TNT are not go, are, are are canceling wrestling. Oh, that's yeah. That's what I was going to say. I wasn't totally clear on the whole TBS television situation because. Oh, that's, what, that's, what that's what killed. That's what killed. That's what killed the deal. Oh, so that, was okay. that there's not. They're not that they. The decision was it wouldn't guarantee him the TV, and I think that the decision it, without without that guaranteed TV, you know, what are you buying? Okay. Mm-hmm. So then, is it, what is it? The TBS is, have they really lost a lot? I mean, because considering, even though they've had the low ratings or lower ratings, aren't WCW programs still fairly, you know, highly rated on on TNT and TBS compared? Yes, to they are. TV? But you've got to remember that you can't. Okay, there's there's the, the, what you've got to remember is is that um, you can't sell advertising on wrestling at the same level of its ratings as, as any other programming advertising. Dave, there. Hello. Okay, I think we lost Dave. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, no, I was just saying that uh, it, 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 I, I, we had that discussion once before about how everybody kind of has this stigma about uh, wrestling fans and that the advertisers won't pay the same as they will for dog shows and tennis events, even if the ratings are higher for wrestling. But uh, that it would just seem logical that if they're still drawing in the twos and they have other TV shows drawing in the twos that, you know, and I, but I guess that's the whole explanation there, that they don't look at the fans as being uh, viable. Well, his whole thing was, you know, if, if uh, WCW was getting a two and another show is getting a one, there's no point in keeping WCW if the advertising that it's bringing in is the same as a show that's doing a one, and they can yeah. just replace it. Especially if it's losing, uh, six, what was that? Especially if it's losing $60 million, you know. Yeah, that's true. No yeah. upside whatsoever. But then, see, then the prospects of, like, another startup coming along, I don't see it being that great, because, I mean, even though they lost $60 million, if some guy has a lot of money and is out there looking to start a big promotion... You know, as far as that would provide any kind of competition or potential competition to McMahon, then he would have looked at something like WCW or maybe even ECW just because it was established and there was sort of a blueprint of what to do. If somebody's got a lot of money out there, I think there's a lot of guys out there with a lot of money looking to start a federation from the ground up. Uh, I mean, whether they have wrestling knowledge or not. That's why, I mean, I think this whole thing is just going to come back to, to hurt Vince and the wrestling industry and obviously the wrestlers as a whole because, like you said, nobody has any leverage now as far as McMahon goes except for the guys that can go to Japan, and that's still not, you know, that viable of an option for a lot of people. My whole my whole thing with the startup and why I'm worried that there won't be another viable startup is it's really going to come down to two things, and that is the TV slot and somebody that has a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing, I'm just looking at WOW, and it's like you have this TV show here with a bunch of women in uh, tight outfits wrestling. You know, this guy's got syndication. He's got a TV show, but... You know, he lost three million dollars in uh, one quarter or whatever it was, mm-hmm. and you would just need so much money to keep this thing going for a period where it could actually be built into something. Yeah, and I think, so think about this also with another with, billionaire. Um, are you guys there? Yeah, I'm here. yeah, we're here. Okay, you know the other thing with Wow is that Wow wasn't paying anyone any of the any of the women any big money. Yeah. So they didn't even have the big salary concerns, and they weren't, you know, sending people on the road. So they didn't have the big travel expenses. But they still managed to pile up three million dollars of debt in a month, in in three in three months, because of just the cost, the ungodly cost of doing television. 
Yeah, because I think a lot of fans don't realize, because, I mean, I've, I was talking to a couple of people, and they were just like, they didn't think it was that big of a deal, because, oh, well, there's still XPW and then UPW, and but I was like, you know, if anybody was ever going to make that jump. Nobody cares about those guys. I'm sorry? Except for us. Nobody cares about those guys but oh, us. Oh, no, yeah. That's what I mean. I mean, if any if, if any company like that that didn't have a lot of money behind it, that even if it was a good product or not, it doesn't matter, because if anybody was going to do that, it would have been ECW, and look what happened to them. I mean, you know, the other thing I want to mention is, is, like, you know, UPW is struggling, and they'll be the first ones to admit it. I mean, we had Rick, Rick Fassman on with a sellout crowd. They may make two, 300 a show, and you can't count on a sellout every time you go out there, and they only run one show a month. Um, XPW is, is losing tons and tons of money. So, I mean, it's like, you know, you know it's kind of a, it's almost a vanity promotion for guys who want to be in wrestling in, in a lot of ways. So it's, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, it, it's not like anyone's making, you know, for a company in the long term to be economically viable, it has to figure out a way to make a profit, and... Aside from WWF, nobody on a big level has figured out a way to do that. I mean, on the, and the small companies, the only way they do it is through the wrestling. You know, a lot of them make their money through the wrestling school gimmick, and the, show, the shows are lost leaders to expose their product to get new kids to sign up for the wrestling school. That's, that's all pro wrestling here. That's how they make their money. Uh, this, is, it's, this is actually clever, but quite sad. Do you think WCW will have a mock funeral for itself on Monday? This is uh, from, from GP who says, The end for WCW was when they didn't put Ric Flair over at Super Brawl 99. Remember, it got a bigger buy rate than Austin against McMahon. Actually, it didn't get a bigger buy rate, but it was right neck and neck. I yeah, mean, they were... Both. It was Flair and Hogan and Austin McMahon, and by all rights, Austin McMahon should have gotten a much bigger buy rate because it was the fresh feud and it was a cage match and it was their first meeting, and Flair and Hogan had wrestled a million times, and they actually were like neck and neck, which said that in February of 1999, the companies, you know... That's how close it was, and that's two years ago. It's amazing that two years ago, now if you put Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan on a buy rate. But anyway, because that angle and Ric Flair as a baby face were hot as hell. Obviously they were. That buy rate proves it. You're right. And you can track the decrease in buy rates and ratings after that, after that payoff, and they turned him heel. Every, yeah, but I then tell he you ended what, up winning the title, so... I, but it was a heel. You know, nobody wanted Ric Flair than not winning the title from Hogan. I think it was, the, it, it's not the title, you know what it was, it was the heel turn, yeah. and the Hogan baby face turn. Mm -hmm. You know, really, you know, even though the Hogan turn got like a big pop initially, because it was, you know, people were waiting for it, in the long run, like the Hogan, Hogan as a baby face was something people wanted to see for like two weeks, and then that was it. And Flair as a heel was something that nobody wanted to see, no matter how good he could play the role. And just think and about it, did, is 15 it? million different examples there are of times when something has gotten a great pop, and everyone's just been... Totally snowed by it. I mean, Sid, we say it all the time about Sid. Here's this big guy. Every time he comes on TV or goes to an arena, the crowds just go crazy initially. But he means nothing. He has horrible matches. He doesn't sell any tickets or, you know, spike pay-per-views. He just means nothing. But they pop big. Yeah. I know. God it's bless Sid, different. but... God bless... You know, you know, that's, that's, that's one of the worst things about wrestling is, I mean... You've got, you know, when you're, when you're booking wrestling, and, you know, very few people do it. When you're booking wrestling, you've got to look at the paid attendance, and you've got to look at, you know what I mean? You've got to look at the yeah, real everything. numbers. Yeah, you've got to look at the numbers. You can't just look at, oh, you know, this guy gets a big pop, therefore we're going to put him in a main. A big pop and big ratings and big pop and big buy rates, they're not the same thing. I mean, I mean Jimmy Valiant, Jimmy Valiant in the Carolinas would get a bigger pop than anyone coming out. Because he just had a great ring entrance, you know, yeah. for that era. You know what I mean? That, that didn't mean that you could put Jimmy Valiant in a main event and, and you know, draw bigger than Ric Flair, even if people, you know, you, you know if, if they were both baby faces, they might yell at her for Jimmy Valiant. But he couldn't draw the money Ric Flair could, in, in, you know, in that era. You know the thing that's hard, though, is, like, if you were the guy in charge of booking WCW and you had all those responsibilities, you really wouldn't have time to examine everything as closely as you do. And at the same time, you could hire, you hire somebody. To, you, you could you hire had, someone to do it. Yeah, but if you hired someone to do it, and you had this person, it's just like the survey that that, that happened when Vince Russo was in charge. Well, there you get. You're right. You, you'd have some guy going, "Look, this this Sid. I mean, you know, he's killing the ratings here." And they go, "This guy knows nothing about wrestling. This is not what the fans want." And they just ignore it. Well, you're right about that because they did have the survey before they were dead, and the survey told them that that. That they should do exactly the opposite of what they did. So the you know what happened? The guy who the guy who spent a year on the survey quit the company the next week because they they <laughs> ignored his results. <laughs> they ignored the results. People saying that they want that they didn't want to be insulted. Let's go to Mark in Connecticut. Mark, how you doing? Hey, hey. 
Uh, Dave, uh, I've got a, quite a few points to make. First of all, great point on your uh, first story today on the website about the uh, cyclical nature of the business and the uh, higher-up execs at Time Warner AOL not even bothering to bring in a wrestling person to examine the history and to advise them uh, of the cyclical nature of the business. Well, that's that's what happens. Uh, you know, you know, the people who make the big decisions when it comes to wrestling are not wrestling people. They're people who own networks, and they have no wrestling background. They look at, you know, they kind of hear two years ago, wow, wrestling's really hot, and now they hear now that wrestling's really sleazy and it's cold. And you know, they don't want they don't want to be they don't want to touch it. That's right. That's what the advent of cable has done. Basically, brought in the executive who doesn't have the wrestling background. Um, second point, I want to clarify something about the contracts. Okay. Um, and I don't usually preach anything as fact, but, you know, take it from me, it's, this is the same way in business or in a sports background. The only way they, the Time Warner can get out of paying the contracts if they fold the company is if they bankrupt it. Just because they fold the company up, the contracts will still be valid. What will they right, no, to, I know, you're, you're right about that. What they will try they, to do is try to buy out the contracts for 40 cents on the dollar, get that, the payoff, exactly. you, yeah, you're right. That, they would be I actually was told However, that, that exact same thing. However, yeah. if so, the guys do not accept the, the payoff of X amount of cents on the dollar, then they will be, pay, have to be paid out over the life of the contract. And, well, do you think Time Warner is going to do these guys a favor of pay them the money and let them go work somewhere else? I don't think so. No, but what they might do is if you get an offer... They'll, they'll, you know, they'll allow you to, you know, you know what I mean, the difference. That's right. That way, they don't have to pay all that money. But let's, like let's if, keep this in mind. I mean, WCW is just a small uh, victim in this slash and burn mentality of AOL Time Warner right now. Um, AOL Time Warner, and I didn't realize they acquired the Braves as part of the uh, Turner Enterprise acquisition, but they just uh, told the Braves organization to slash ten scouts and five advanced coaches in the uh, in the uh, scouting department. Which tells you, you know, with the Braves doing what they do and that being a necessity of uh, running a baseball operation, it goes to t- show you just how far down the food chain WCW was. It's almost well, and there's the other thing when you're talking about that. It's like, okay, so so they're basically mortgaging the future of the Braves. That's basically it. That's right. Yeah. One, they figure one scout can handle a 2,000 mile area or a 1,500 mile area as opposed to you know having two guys work 700 miles apiece. Um, next point I want to make is about uh about the Costas interview uh, Thursday night. You know what really struck me as odd? Bob was a big, big wrestling supporter, not just a fan and supporter. He used to call matches on the radio in St. Louis, did he not? Yes, uh-huh. yes, he did. Bob Costas grew up as a wrestling fan. That's he, right. He was the one. In fact, my first interaction with Bob Costas in 1984 was when he did a wrestling special on the boom of wrestling in that year. And one of the things was, you know, like like... There was a lot of positive and negative, and when we would talk, one of the reasons why I had less input in that special was because he did not want to look at anything negative. That's and that's why I didn't like his special. That's right. Was he, he would only look at the positive because he, he just thought that this was not a product that you take seriously. It was just fun. And then what, what happened was it was the Persian Gulf War angle, and he was supposed to be in that WrestleMania. As a that's right. Of he was supposed to do the thing with Steinbrenner. But that's right. He was out. supposed to be at the at WrestleMania in 91, and with the Persian Gulf War angle, all of a sudden it was like, wow, you know, this is not harmless entertainment. They're exploiting, you know, they were exploiting the troops and things like that with what Hogan did and everything. And it was just like, you know, he it left a bad taste in his mouth, and he pulled out. That's right. And he has not been, and he's not been a wrestling fan since. And and the part of the part part of the reason that that Bob is uh, so passionate about his about his uh, sports journalism is remember he's had an ongoing war with the. Uh, with the owners of uh, most of the major uh, American sports for the last 15 or 20 years, with good reason. But, I mean, I think he takes more of a, you know, it's become a little bit of a personal vendetta, you know, just trying to shout loud enough to be heard, which I don't think is ever going to happen, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. You know, um, all right, the, uh, just want to touch on one or two more points. Um, Dave, a personal request, and I think it would be apropos considering what happened today. Um, I sent you an email a while back. I'd like to uh, listen to the, uh, the, the show you did from uh, Long Island in February of last year. Um, mm-hmm. The WCW remote. I think, and if there's there any way to get that up on the archives, I think in light of what happened with WCW, it might be a, an interesting listen. Ask Al. Uh, actually, that won't happen anytime in the near future. That's uh, probably filed away somewhere. But uh, send, send the request again to Dave, to, uh, Dave Meltzer at yada.com. I'll see what we can do. Okay. And my very last point, you made the point about uh, the, you guys as wrestling journalists going to have a tough time of it. I think the, the one that's going to hurt the most is not so much you, you or Brian. It's going to be Wade Keller. Because Wade dropped his international coverage about four years ago to concentrate on what he thought the uh, his readership wanted was the American market. And now he's going to have to put out 12 pages of WWF product, which is going to be very tough for him to do. Any thoughts? Hello? Yeah, hello? Did we lose Dave again? Yeah, I think we lost him again. Okay, yeah, I mean, I just... I'm, finally, I'm back right now. Okay. 
I mean, the whole thing for me is I just I was doing four pages of just U.S. like three months ago, and I had WWF, WCW, ECW, and just like out of the blue, I decided to go back to twelve and cover everything, and then all of a sudden. You know, everything happened. It's going to be very tough for Keller to, to do that. And I think, I, I mean, I respect his reason for not doing the international coverage anymore. Well, I, I understand his reasons. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I do international, and Brian does too, because we have a real passion for the business. I'm not saying he doesn't, but it's, it's, it's just it's more like that. It. Yeah. It, it, you, know, you know what it is? It's, it's like, to me, you know, one of the reasons why I probably have always covered Japan is because I learned so much about wrestling from Japan well, the first time I went there, you know, which is, um, you know, I was told by Bruiser Brody and by Terry Funk. You know, the, I mean, like, you want to learn about the business and where the business is going to be ahead of time, you watch everybody, and you learn from everybody. You know what I mean? You don't just sit and watch one company, because then you'll, you won't have any perspective. And I think that that was probably, like, the best advice anyone ever gave me for covering wrestling. And, I, and I've always stuck to it. That's why I always, at least, I try on Tuesday night, which is the worst night for me, to watch a little bit of the Mexican. You know, I try to be, you know, somewhat fluent on all, on all styles, because... You never know where the next phenom is coming. You never know which promoter is going to have a really good idea. And if you, you know, like a Russo, and you only, and you close your mind to every form but what you know, mm-hmm. you know you and, and and then it doesn't work. What do you do? That's right. That's exactly right. Um, well, I'll let you guys guys wrap it up. Great show again, and I'll uh, talk to you guys soon. Take care now. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, Al, should we take one more call, or do we got to go? Okay. I want to thank everyone for joining in today. I wish that we had a lot more time, and uh, we'll be back. I want to thank Al and uh, Brian for all their help this week. And hope you guys all have a good weekend. We'll watch the uh, last WCW pay-per-view. And we'll be talking about that on Monday. And I'm sure we will have tons of more news to talk about. I'm sure we'll be talking to pretty much everyone in WCW in the next couple of days. And uh, maybe well, we'll, 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 have, we'll see how it goes for the what looks like the final week of World Championship Wrestling uh, the next nine or ten days. Anyway, we'll be back Monday at 5.